Hello and welcome to yet another video. Today we have an MSI Tomahawk B450 Max coming all the way from Sweden to me. And we got a little letter attached to it. Let's see if I can get it to focus. I'm gonna read it, the focus is not focusing. This motherboard is a no-boot. It has been in storage for too long, so I cannot remember how it failed. BIOS reset does nothing. I remember I used BIOS flashback and still no boot. I've tried different CPUs and memory modules, but the motherboard is dead. I hope you like Swedish candy and I hope you did not melt in the hot summer temperatures. Have a nice day from Patley. Patrick in Smallland, Sweden. And the great thing is, I got some candy. And the really cool thing is my wife really loves chocolate and I love like the fruit gummies or whatever you would call these. So yeah, I'm very thankful for that. I will be I will be enjoying that. Thank you very much. So let's have a look together at this mainboard and see if we can figure out what is wrong with it. So the heat sinks are individually packed here. Very interesting. So we don't need those and the BIOS battery. So let's only get the mainboard on the bench and see what we have here. So I've had the, uh, this kind of motherboard multiple times on my bench. Most of the time it had uh, problems with knocked off components. Didn't really have any electrical issues. So let's see. Let's see for its passive power consumption. So let's see now, I've got a 2200G in here. We have 110 milliamps. Okay, so nothing special. Seems to be fine, three BSB is running, I can see that. This thing does have boot LEDs. Uh, so we start from the very top with CPU and then the usual way. So let's get a speaker onto here and also a power button. So let's press the power button. So we have a stuck CPU LED. We get no heat, we only have 500 milliamps. So we do have a reaction to the power button, but we have, but we don't get any boot codes. Does it react to the power button while turning off? It doesn't seem like it. And I also do not get any boot codes. So I would guess our CPU is not initializing. Um. For a CPU not initializing, I would guess that we either have a BIOS problem or maybe knocked off components somewhere, especially because this board has been handled, seem, uh, it seems like it a lot, because all of the heat sinks are off. So I will go over to visual inspection next to see if we have any damage anywhere on the board. So I took quite some time to look around and have a look what I found on the back side actually. So this is at the top side, uh, close to the VRM. This is a mounting hole for the CPU. And we have two knocked off components here. It seems like one is a 2.2 ohm resistor and one might be a capacitor or a resistor. I will have to look in the board view. You can see some few more points like here that there's definitely been some damage done to this board on the back side. So on the board view right now, um, let's have a look. It is this here. So we have this resistor right here that, that is still present, but this one and this one. This is capacitor and this is a resistor VCC5 for VR VCC. Let, where does that go? That is the VCC for the controller, for the PWM controller. That's, that explains why we don't get anything like why we would be stuck on a CPU LED. So let's try to replace these. So we need a 2.2 ohm resistor and we need a, what is it, 0.1 microfarad, 16 volts. So let's find some of those. I was able to find exactly what we need. So there we have a 2.2 ohm resistor that can go here. And then there's also a 0.1 microfarad capacitor right here. Also took it from a B450 MSI donor board. So yeah, le let's get one side tagged onto here. So one side is tagged on there. 
let's get one side of the capacitor tacked on. And what then I always do is, then I take my hot air. And with one side being tacked on, they won't just fly away. And then I reflow them into place. And as you can see, they basically went into place by themselves. Yep. And that's our area already rebuilt. Now taking some IPA. So now our area is rebuilt and also looking nice. Um, we might have need to have a look at this resistor right here. As you can see, it does have a dent in here. So um, let's measure that resistor just to be sure that that resistor is still in spec and didn't get damaged. So we first have to have a look into the board view. So let's see, it should be this resistor. So this is just a zero ohm resistor. Okay, and all of the rest is not um, not assembled except that capacitor that is still there. Okay, so let's see that it has zero ohms. So let's see now. I'm taking our multimeter. And we have zero ohms. If we go into a different range of the multimeter. Yeah, 1.3. It might have taken a hit actually, but it might also be my probes having bad contact. So one, one ohm is definitely fine. So let's have a look now. Let's turn on our power supply. And see. Passive power consumption is higher now already. Let's get a power button onto here. And let's see. CPU instantly DRAM, two arms of power consumption. This looks very promising. Let's see, we're still stuck on a DRAM, uh, on a CPU LED right now. With 1.8 amps. And we seem to be actually stuck. Let's see, I press the reset button. Let's see, after one reset, let's see if it behaves differently. But still stuck on a CPU LED. Let's try to reset the BIOS. So I'm holding the contact of the clear CMOS right now with my tweezers. And let's see, the BIOS has been reset. There's no battery in here. Let's see if we now get any change. And we're still stuck on the CPU LED. So not quite fixed yet. But the previous, um, the, the viewer that sent me this board actually said that he tried to do a BIOS flashback. So let's just try a 3000G in here. I think the 2200G should be supported in here, but let's just try another CPU. And if that doesn't work, we will probably have to flash the BIOS of this board. So let's see, 3200G, oh, 3000G in here. And still on a CPU indication. But now the CPU actually gets hot. Okay. So I think we will need to flash the BIOS on this board. And I will be doing it via the header that we have here. So I will be doing in circuit programming. So the BIOS has been flashed. Let's see now if we have change. So about 100 milliamps. And let's press the power button. CPU LED, 2 amps, and it turned off, 1.8 amps, CPU LED again, 2 amps, 1.1 amp, that looks very good, this is the 2200G, 
CPU LED turning off. Almost two amps, restarting a lot, probably RAM training. And VGA LED re resetting again. 2.3, 3.6, VGA and a boot screen. Very, very nice to see. Let's connect the keyboard up to here. And there's our bio screen. Very, very nice. So, let's turn this off once more. And let's build up this bot so we can do some stress tests with it and see that also our VCore is running properly. So, give me a second to do that. So, I didn't comment on this part. I didn't really plan to show this. But, um, very often these M.2 headers are missing. <clears throat> and, like the actual thread is missing where you would thread in the screw and what I always do is I take standoffs from cases so what I do I supply uh, apply solder to them as you can see right here and I solder into there a a header from not a header but but a standoff out of a out of a, a motherboard or like the case itself and all you do is just flood it with solder and you can see me right here taking this stand off <laughs> and then dropping it and trying to drop that uh, stand off into there so that's all I do and the standard M.2 screw as far as I know fits into there and even if not like you can use just a case screw then to uh, put that in so what I do I always just try to have the solder melted and then pry or put the standoff into there so here you will need a lot of heat it's really not easy to do that as you can see i'm struggling really hard so just keep in mind heat up the area you can preheat it with either preheater or your hot air and also having the standoff uh, preheated also helps a lot you don't need a lot of contact and you can see what i'm doing right here i'm just flooding it with solder under it just to to get it to stick into there. So the board is built up, four sticks of RAM. We have a CPU, we have a GPU in, in here. And now we're going into Windows and I will be running some stress tests on here. So Linpack has passed on this board. So I'm pretty certain that this board works now. I've tested some USB, I've tested the ethernet and it seems to be working very fine. So it had damage to to the VRAM, this time by an octave component, uh, not giving the VPP or like the VCC to the PWM controller, thus uh, VCore not starting and probably SOC and also not starting and the BIOS was also a problem. And I have a quick question for you guys, if you still uh, got to this point of the video, should I show how I flash the BIOS? Because this time I just did everything off screen, like I've done that multiple times that I just said, okay, I'm going to flash the BIOS, I flash it off screen and then show you the result. Or should I just, should I still show how I flash the BIOS? Like this time I used the header on the board to flash the BIOS. And yeah, I don't know if that's still interesting for some of you. So leave me a comment down below if I still should show that or not. But thank you very much for sending in this mainboard from repair all the way from Sweden. Thank you so much for the candy. I will be greatly enjoying that. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something as always. All of my tools are linked in the video description. I hope you subscribe there. I can see you in the next video. Thank you so much for being here and goodbye.